Astronomy GCSE Topic 13. Let's draw an HR diagram. Sounds like fun. Okay, what is an HR diagram to start with? Well, it's a scatter diagram. It, lots and lots and lots of different stars out there. They have different absolute magnitudes. They have different temperatures. And you basically plot it on a graph. So you put different points down for all the different stars you can see. Uh, if you do that, what we see is four distinct regions on our scatter diagram. And the HR diagram, why is it useful? It helps us to understand the evolution of stars. And I'll talk about that later in this video. And also you can use it to find the distance to a star. If you know whereabouts it is on your diagram, then you can know, you can find its absolute magnitude. And if you know that, you can work out how far away it is. You might be asked to draw an HR diagram. It's something that comes up very regularly. Lots and lots of marks for it. So how do you draw an HR diagram? Okay, something you might be asked to do in the exam is to draw an HR diagram. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw one now together, step by step. If you are asked to do this, there'll be loads and loads of marks for it. So make sure you can do it. So we've got our two axes. Now the axis at the bottom is temperature. So temperature. Something a bit weird about this axis here is that normally you'd go from cold to hot, but on this particular temperature axis, um, colder, colder, I don't think there's any cold stars, but colder is up there and hotter is over there. So it's a kind of a backwards temperature axis. It goes from hot to cold. The, the hottest stars, they go up to about 50,000 Kelvin. If you want to be flash, you can put some numbers on. The coldest stars at their surface, they go down to about 2,500 Kelvin. So a backwards temperature axis. One thing you can put on this axis, it's up to you, is, if I just make it a bit wider, is we can put O, B, a fine girl, kiss me. O, B, a fine girl, kiss me. Uh, of course, we uh, space it out. Something like that. Okay, it doesn't fit it exactly, but it's pretty close. It's a good, good rule of thumb, and it gives you an idea of where the different types of star are on our axes. Okay, maybe shift it over that way a bit and stretch it out a bit more. I can't be bothered. So, oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. I'll tell you what I'll do. If I put that over there, and then get rid of that. There you go. Okay, this axis over here, this is brightness, or we can say it is uh, absolute magnitude. So it's the amount of light that the star is giving off, the absolute magnitude of the star. Pardon me. And there you go. Got him. And he's over there. And so this is pretty straightforward the brightest stars very very bright stars the ones that are giving off lots of light are up there and the dimmer stars the ones that don't give off a great deal of light are down there okay right these are our axes sorted we've already picked up loads of marks right in the middle of the diagram there are four blobs and we need to know what these blobs are and we need to be able to label them. So the most important blob uh, is this big sausage that runs through the middle and it goes all the way across there, this big sausage there and that is called the main sequence. That is the main sequence and this is stars that are in the middle of their lifetime uh, it includes the sun 
what I can do is actually put on here. The sun is, it's a G2 star. It's about there. It's not particularly big. It's a main sequence star. It's in this big sausage here. There's our sun. Okay. Uh, the next blob I'm going to do is down here. Now, these stars are very hot, but they don't give off lots of light. Uh, and they don't give off lots of light because they're not very big. They are very small, very hot stars, and they are white dwarves. White dwarves. Is it dwarfs or dwarves? There you go, white dwarfs. Okay, so this blob here, small, hot, white dwarfs, main sequence. Right, two more blobs to do. Uh, my next blob is around here. Now, these stars uh, aren't particularly hot, but they're giving off lots and lots of light, and they're doing that because they are big. So this blob here, they are, let's put it inside, they are giants. Okay, uh, and then there is one more blob and these guys give off lots and lots of light because they are very, very big. Uh, in terms of temperature, there's a bigger range of temperatures. These guys around here, and they are, I'm sure you know by now, they are super giants. Okay, so four blobs. I'm not saying they're in exactly the perfect position, I mean, in, in real life, they're not this segregated. There is a bit of, you know, crossing over between them. But this is certainly enough to get the marks in an exam. White dwarfs, the main sequence, giants and supergiants. I'm going to add one more thing to my diagram. And that is something else. I'm going to do it in a different color, which is basically going from going in this direction here, in this direction from bottom left to top right, is the stars are getting bigger. So the smaller stars are bottom left. Let's put an arrow, another arrow there. The smaller stars are bottom left, the biggest stars are top right. And I reckon that's a, that's a pretty good HR diagram. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label it an HR diagram. Okay, so here's a, a, a very well-known HR diagram off the internet. Here's my HR diagram. Not bad, a eh? Pretty close. And you can see the four main groups of stars on the HR diagram. Now, the life cycle of our sun. We're going to talk about the life cycle of stars in a, a later topic. Stars like our sun and stars much, much bigger than our sun. From GCF, GCSE physics, you should remember nebula, then protostar, then main sequence, then red giant, then white dwarf, then black dwarf. Now, what does that look like on an HR diagram? One of the most useful things about HR diagrams is that they can help us to understand the evolution of stars. And what we can do on a, an HR diagram is show the evolution of our sun. Now, our sun is going to start off as a protostar. Now, protostars aren't on this diagram because they're not really stars. Fusion hasn't started yet. If they were on, they would be somewhere over here because they're not, they're not very bright and they're not very hot. So protostars over here, then our sun comes onto the diagram like this. Okay, so from this bottom right corner, it moves onto the main sequence, and this is where our sun is now. 
okay? Uh, our sun will be on the main sequence for a total of about 10 billion years. Uh, it's a, is it a yellow dwarf, I believe, our sun. Uh, when the hydrogen starts to run out, what will happen is our sun will get much, much bigger and it will become a red giant. And so it will go from the main sequence into the giants there. Um, it'll stay a red giant for a while, then that will collapse and it will become a white dwarf. And on this diagram, I'm going to draw like that. So our sun is going to become a white dwarf. Uh, this white dwarf will eventually cool down and it'll take a long, long time to do it. It will eventually become a black dwarf and it, now it moves off the diagram and as it becomes a black dwarf we're kind of heading in this direction over here and a black dwarf isn't really a star because there isn't any fusion happening in it so this diagram shows the the life cycle of our sun on an hr diagram protostar to main sequence to a red giant to a white dwarf and then it moves off the diagram to become a black dwarf. Lastly, what about stars which have a mass much greater than our sun? We're going to talk about their life cycle later on in another topic, but just for now, on an HR diagram, this is what it would look like from the main sequence onwards. Main sequence to a supergiant, then it does this weird thing, it ends up as a, a supernova.